Hello YouTube and welcome back. My name is Josh Kinney and in this tutorial I'll be discussing environment objects and how to use them inside the Swift UI. Now if I had to guess I assume you're already understanding what an environment object is or have an idea and now you're just looking at a video to kind of show how to use it. Um, nevertheless I'm going to go ahead and open up Safari here and show you right from Apple's documentation page what the environment object is and what they state. So this is the property wrapper of type observable object. And it's supplied by the parent or an ancestor uh, view. So the reason why you want this, let's say you have a variable in an app that you want to see on multiple views, not just one view. Um, well, the old ways of doing things is you used to be able to pass um, this object from one view to the other to the other, and then you can access it. Well, with this environment object, you can now uh, instead of passing it, it basically just gets thrown out into the environment and every view that is basically below or like a child view of the ancestor view or the parent view that you created can now access this variable that you're needing. Um, so it's very powerful and helpful when creating apps and we're actually going to look at an app now and discuss where and how to use these. So let's go ahead and look at that now. Over here, I have an Xcode project that I've already created. And you can see uh, I have a content view. I haven't done anything in there yet. I have made a button mod. I'm not going to go in details with this because that's not what this um, video is about. But I will link in the description a video how to make modifiers. Um, so you don't have to keep repeating your modifiers per button, which you'll see later on. And you'll learn how to do that as well. Uh, the last thing I have is this... Um, display view that I added and right now I just have a Z stack that has the color for the background and then inside the V stack I have three settings one is the name of the user two is the volume and three is um, the actual date itself now if you see over here this is uh, displaying exactly what I just said so it's the user is default user the volume is set to 10 right now because it's just a string that I passed over and then the date is August 9th 2021 so now what I'm really thinking of doing and want to do in this one is go to this content view and actually create the settings. So this is going to be the page that holds the settings. Um, for instance, if your app had a settings page or a view. And whenever you change the settings here, I want to be able to pop over to this display view and actually see those settings take place. And we're going to achieve that with the environment objects. So let's go ahead and create that now. Um, right here, we're going to go new file. We're just going to name it a Swift file. Hit next. Um, then we're going to name this display because this is for the display view that we created right here. So we're going to make it settings for that. So I'm going to name it display view settings. For your app, it could be something else, but that makes sense to me for this one. Um, okay, right here, we're going to import Swift UI. And then I'm going to go over this, paste it in real quick and show you. So I just made a class called display view settings. Here's the most important part, which is making it of type observable object, not observed object. You'll see the two different ones. This one is the actual observable one. And then you're going to have your four um, settings that we need. So of course we want the name of the user, the volume, make sure this is of type double because we're going to put it on a slider. And when you do that, um, it needs to be of type double or you'll get some errors um, unless you fix it on the other side. To avoid that, I just make it of type double. Uh, the next thing is the color, a uh, background color. So we're going to make a color of type dot white. Uh, and then the other published uh, property we're going to have is date is displayed to set to true. So that's going to be a boolean. I want to show you real quick though, if you type in published, you'll see right here, this is a type for the combined frameworks type that publishes a property marked with an attribute. So this is just uh, taking these uh, var, uh, vars or variables that we're creating and publish them, publishing them out. That's all that it's doing there. Some people get really hung up on that, uh, but don't. You just need that whenever we want to publish something in an observable object. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and start using these. The next thing we wanna do is pop back over here uh, to this content view, which and here is where we're going to actually grab that um, this observable object here. So we want to go ahead and do an at state. 
but not just a state variable. If you're interested in learning about those and you don't know yet, I have another video I'll link in the description for that. Uh, but you're wanting to have a state object. Now, the state object is actually a new property wrapper that initializes the instance of a class that conforms to what? Observable object. And that's the class we just now created. So it initializes that. The best part about that is this stores inside of the SwiftUI framework in memory. And this keeps your data safe and out of the actual scene and the view lifecycle. So um, that's pretty powerful stuff there. So state, um, we're going to go state object. And then from there, we're going to actually set this to be a variable of, we can, let's just call it my settings, because that's what we're going to be grabbing. Um, everything in there is some sort of setting in a way. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and set that to equal display view settings and then we're going to initialize it and then real quick we when we change the background color we're going to hit a button and it's going to do a random color the way we do that is to make a variable here um, and i'm going to just paste it here for you and it's just going to be of type it's going to be called the colors of type and array of color and we're going to set that to equal you know dot red dot purple dot green gray these are just colors that you can access so if you hit a dot you can see ones that are left so i think black's another one and it's not letting me, oh, I gotta do a comma here. So if I did a comma and then dot, you can see black, blue, clear, gray. Those are the colors that you're, you're given so you can access those. Um, there's other ones as well, but these are the ones I've chose. Okay, so now uh, we're going to have uh, a navigation link to go back and forth from content view and the display view. So because of that, we need to go ahead and create a navigation um, view. So I'm gonna embed that navigation. Okay, and then inside of that, we're going to have a VStack because all these buttons are going to be stacked on top of each other. So embed in VStack. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and do the navigation link here. Um, I've already got it, so let me just grab it and I will explain. Um, so we are going... We are going to call this go to display view. So that's what's going to be on this uh, navigation link. The destination, of course, is going to go up to the display view. Uh, and then I did this dot modifier and it's my button mod, which is what I set up. And then I'm going to set it to black. Um, let's see if we can resume and see it. I don't think so, but we will see. Oh, there it goes. So this is what that mod is doing. And if you go back over here again, I'm not going to go in great detail, but this is what I have set up. And this is what it's grabbing. This is my color, which is what it's seeing there as well. Um, I will link a video to that for you as well. So you can go back and see how to do that. It's really awesome. So you don't have to list a whole bunch of modifiers down on each of these buttons that we create. And they'll look very similar. So um, it's pretty powerful stuff. So the next thing we are going to do is we're going to add a spacer here. Because uh, this is going to push... This display view, I want that to be at the top, and then the slider, and then the three buttons below. Uh, so let's go ahead and now make our slider. And then this, you need the binding. So what we're going to do here is we are going to do the dollar sign my settings dot volume, okay? And then we're going to do a comma in 012310. So that's going to give us a between 0 and 10. Okay. Cool in there. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing here with the modifier. So we're going to do text. And then from there, we're going to do a volume. And then we're going to make this the settings there because we want to see the volume on this screen as well. Um, so we're going to do my settings. And then we're going to tap volume. And then from there, we're going to specify this. So we're going to add a specifier. And then from there, we're going to add a 600. I'm sorry, uh, the specifier, because we want to, if we don't, it'll be like a whole bunch of zeros after the number because it's a double. We only want it to go over one spot. So to do that, you're going to go ahead and add in this specifier here. And it's that percent sign. And then you're going to do a dot F. 
or 1f. If you did just an f, it'd be no decimals. If you did a 2f, there'd be two decimal points after the decimal. Um, so we only want to go one over. So there that is. And then at the very end of this, of course, we want to add just normal padding. And then that one is done as well. So now the next thing we want to add is a button. And we want to add the action label. Action, we are going to do my settings dot username. And then we're going to change this. I'm just going to do um, J Kenny. 01 that's that's me I guess for one of my usernames so whenever this is pressed this settings now is going to change from whatever it is to J Kenny 01 and if you look back over here we have it set right now as default user so that's just going to change that um, okay and then the text of course we are going to set this to um, change username Okay, and then we are going to also at the very end of all this add that modifier. So modifier, and this is going to be my button mod, and then we are going to name this a dot yellow, and then that is done there right now. See if it'll let us resume that and see, and there we go. So now we have a volume that we can change. Well, if I played that, we can change it, but I'm gonna keep going to save some time. But now you have your change username. And again, the buttons are very similar. I'm just changing the color. Um, we can go ahead and get rid of this Hello World now. And we are going to copy this exact button. And we're gonna add another one here. Um, this one is going to be um, instead of when, whenever we click this one instead of the user um, instead of the usernames getting changed we're actually going to do um, something a little different so dot background color is equal to the colors which is up here dot random we want it to be a random element And then we can erase this. And then we have to give it a, uh, an or, and then you want to just click color dot white. So if it's not, it's just going to be color dot white. Um, and then the label for this is turn background color friend or uh, turn background a random color. Um, turn background a random color and then the same modifier except uh, yellow. Let's make it green There it is cool now let's copy the same thing again And this time we are going to um, toggle the date, okay, so We are going to go here and we are going to, oh, I'm sorry, right here, and we're going to add my settings.date is displayed, and we just want to do a toggle there, right? And basically, that means it's going to go from true to false, okay? So now that we did that, we're going to toggle the date. That's what we're going to name it. Capitalize this and keep the same kind of font or format that we have. Um, then the modifier for this one. Again, we can make these colors and everything, whatever you want. Um, I'm just kind of going off what I already have. Um, that's a gray one. Okay. So now let's go ahead and add another spacer here. The last thing in this one, we want to go and do a dot environment object, and then we're going to make that of my settings there. Um, so now let's go ahead and grab, go over to the display view and we will grab that here. So we're going to go ahead and I'll paste it here for you and explain. It's just going to be the environment at object, um, at environment object, I'm sorry, then variable, um, then it's uh, my settings of type, 
display view settings. So now it's going over to this display view and that's how it's grabbing all these. So now that we've done that, we can now actually go in here and make all these appropriate changes. So instead of just color gray, we can do my settings dot whatever that color is. And then it'll, it'll um, randomize because we did the array of colors. Um, inside of the here now, uh, if we want to grab this user, so all we have to do is go here and instead of default user, we will do this and set in my settings dot username. And then it'll say user and then my username whenever that's clicked on. Um, the next thing is the actual volume here. So the text for this is going to be a little bit different. Um, that is, so you want to do the volume and then string interpolation, my settings dot volume. And then from there, you want to go ahead and add that specifier. Uh, we're going to do date. I apologize, the specifier is not date. It is the dot uh, parentheses dot 1f and that's just telling you how far over from the decimal point you want to go. We just want to go over one um, and then leave the padding the same. The last thing is this. So we want to show slash hide the date. Uh, so the way we do that is we do if my settings dot date is displayed is true and then we want to put this date that we have inside of here so show the date if this is true but when we click the button it's going to toggle it and if it's toggled and it's not true it's not going to display that so that's going to go away and date's going to be disappeared so now let's go ahead and run this and see what it looks like so here we have the go to display view so let's click on that and you'll see we have user as default user, volume zero, and then the date is showing. Okay, now if I was to change the volume, let's just go to 4.2, go back and automatically 4.2 is now updating because it's grabbing these most up-to-date settings or uh, variables because it's, they are wrapped in that environment object. So that's how we're using this across different views. Uh, let's see another one. We're going to change the username. So now it should say, uh, jkenny01 there we go it no longer says default user um, let's do another one let's toggle the date off so go over here and now the date is gone let's toggle the date back on go back and there's the date again and then lastly you want to turn uh, the background to a random color boom that's pink let's do another one that's green let's do another one and let's toggle the date Boom, that's gray. Let's do one more. Turn the date off, do a random, and then let's change this down to 1.6. 1.6, oh, it's still green. I want to see a new one. There it is. There's orange, 1.6, and then the date. And that is it, guys. And also, that's going to do it for this video. If you did like it and learned something from this, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. If you want to see my upcoming content, hit that bell as it will notify you when my latest content is out. And lastly, if you have not yet, please go and subscribe to the channel as that helps me get my content out to others who want to learn Swift and Swift UI. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.